We got almost 1,200 pounds of 4140 steel going in the DVF 8000. You know, this thing's gonna be turning about 200 RPMs right at our face. We designed a part specifically for this DVF 8000T to showcase its abilities for our Boombastic show. Ready to rock. Wait, 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 wait. This ain't no yacht part. Oh no. Good God. Let's take this all the way back to the beginning. I will give them something they've never seen before. It's been a fantastic event. You know, the facility is really incredible here at Titans. Quite honestly, one of the best trade shows that I've ever attended. It's really, really cool to see people come from not only all over the United States, but also outside of the country. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's awesome seeing everyone interested in so much manufacturing. Yeah. You get to see all these different setups, all these different machines being run. They're actually cutting apart. It's fantastic. They're really looking for education, looking yeah. what's new out there. They're coming from all over North America. Yeah. They're really surprising how far people have come for this, but it's been a great experience. It's been awesome. There's been a lot of traffic, a lot of young people coming through in our industry, which is what we need. Yeah. It's been crazy. There's so much inspiration and so many incredible stories. People who started their shop yeah. because of these videos. People who tool up their shop because of these videos. It's really more than a media channel. It's kind of a movement. It's always really cool and a humbling experience when you get to meet the people in person who are always commenting or sending us messages in private and bringing that to life and getting to meet those people and hear their stories in person is just an amazing experience. And we can't thank you enough to everyone that came to our facility during that event. Look guys, Titan has already said that Boombastic 2025 is gonna be so much bigger than this year. So if you're interested in coming to that, make sure you check out the link in the description below. So to start out, we're gonna take one heck of a cut. We're not going to turn the face. I'm actually going to put in a 45 degree, 80 millimeter diameter face mill, and we're going to face that top off. That way, if it hits any material inconsistencies, it's not really going to bother it. So another thing about material like this is it's gonna have a pretty rough mill scale on the outside. So it's gonna be very rough on your inserts. So what I like to do in situations like this, when I've got a lot of material to rough, is I don't wanna damage my insert right off the bat. So what I'm gonna do is add another tool that's dedicated just to that mill scale. It's gonna come in and it's gonna take one pass right down the OD and that's it. Now we are going to only rough down about halfway, so just past this first radius. My tools are not really long enough to go all the way down the part, so the actual spindle itself will hit the top of the part if I try to turn all the way. And then we'll come in and rough the rest away on a slight angle. We're gonna actually gonna angle forward about 10 degrees. That's gonna help get that spindle away from the top of that part. So since we're only roughing about halfway down, I wanna show you a little trick that I like to do to make sure that my insert don't run into a wall. If we don't have to face right up to a 90 degree wall, I don't want to, because that could end up trapping those chips and causing the tool to break or chip the insert itself. So what I like to do, I drew a line. It kind of comes up at an angle, it's angled back. So when we turn up against that wall, by it being back at a slight angle, as we go down, that gives a little bit of room for those chips to get out of the way of my insert so it don't end up breaking it or, or chipping the edge. So we 
we've paused this program about halfway through the roughing of this first section because we got to change some GoPro batteries. I thought this would be a good time to check that insert out and see how it's holding up. All right, so looking at this insert, I see we've got some pretty heavy notching. So that must be where the chip is forming and hitting that edge as we're turning down. So that's pretty impressive. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this just to make sure that the insert can make it the rest of the way. And we'll check it again once all the roughing is done. Now, as y'all seen a thousand times, we're not running coolant because of filming purposes. So you guys can see what's going on. But as that whey oil drips down and we run across that, we're getting a lot of smoke inside the machine. That's where our Aero X is really coming in nicely because they installed this right before the Boombastic show. What's really cool about Aero X is they work with the machine tool builder to find exactly where they put the cutout for Miss Collector. They design a bracket and mount their unit right over where that cutout is. That way you get the maximum amount of pull from your mist collector. And I think that's what really sets them apart from everybody else. So after we rough this first section, we're gonna call that first turning tool back up and I'm gonna rotate back at a 10 degree angle and it's gonna take the rest of that mill scale off the OD. She wants to take that one pass. And then we'll call our multi-tool back up and we'll start roughing the rest of the part out on that 10 degree angle. And you'll see as we get down towards the bottom of the stock, the spindle is gonna be tilted away from the top just slightly. Now, the cool thing about using a multi-tool is it saves a little time on tool changes. And this one just happens to be a CNMG on both sides. So I have two inserts, both CNMG. They're both at the same angle. But what I can do here is I've got a 543 on one side, but on my finishing side, I'm stepping down a little bit and I've got a 542. So that's what I'm gonna to use to finish with. Since my tool is too short to do the entire part all in one, I'm actually going to break it up and finish it in two sections. The first section is going to be at that 10 degree angle and it's going to do that concave radius out to the end of the part. Next, we're going to do that front convex radius and we're actually going to finish from the back to the front and we're going to face it all at the same time. So now that the OD is complete, we got to come in and bore the ID. So the last tool that's gonna to come in is a boring bar. And this is where we're gonna step down to a KM50. The tools that we've run in before is a KM63, so they're a lot bigger. This one's a little longer, so we're gonna to have to make sure that we don't get chatter, but it's still gonna be that same 543 insert. We're just gonna come in, take a couple roughing passes on the ID, and then finish it up. And after we finish the bore, that's gonna complete all of the turning. We've designed our part for the Boombastic show. We want to do both turning and milling, so we need a way to hold this material. And for that, we've ordered a Shunk Rota M Flex 630 chuck, which is a perfect size chuck for a machine like this. But before we mounted it, we found a problem. Bruh. The mounting for this chuck uses M24 bolts, and that's bigger than the T slots in the table, so we don't have any way of holding it down. So now we need to take another step back and we need to make an adapter plate just to hold the chuck so we can hold our part. So this is actually perfect timing because we're gonna do most of the machining on this adapter plate on our BVM 5700. And we just installed a brand new shunk magnetic chuck which is gonna be perfect. This stock is round for our adapter plate and I don't wanna to have to create a bunch of processes to machine a little bit, move clamps, machine the rest of it. I can just throw it on this magnetic chuck, probe it and go. Shunk actually sells these pole extensions in a couple different sizes so you can get your part up off the magnetic chuck but still get that magnetism. So I'm gonna strategically place these pole extensions to where I don't drill into them when I drill all the way through the adapter plate and I'll still get some very good holding power. So 
we're gonna start out with the bottom side first. We're gonna mill a alignment pin hole to align it up to the center of the table. I've got a couple more holes that we're gonna go ahead and drill and then we're gonna mill the outside. Flip it over. We need to indicate it in to align it with those holes from op one. And then we'll do the counter bores and some relief cuts. I don't want to finish this out on the BVM because I want it to be perfectly true with the table on my five axis. So we're going to take it over to the DVF 8000, mount it to the center of the table. And then we're gonna come in and use that new turning functionality that MasterCam developed and turn a boss so our chuck slip fits over the outside to keep it dead true. Next, we get the chuck tightened down, and now we can put our soft jaws on here so we can turn those to hold our material. And through the power of movie magic, you're not gonna see any of this work. We just made several hours worth of work in one minute. <laughs> And now back to your regularly scheduled program. And before you go, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because over 70% of the people that's watching this video right now aren't. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to want to see part two because we're going to be doing some full five axis simultaneous with this giant part. And I can't wait because we're gonna be using the Harvey 1TE to take some monster ramps. And then we're gonna come in with the Harvey 4, rough those pockets out, and then we got some swarf milling to do. And then we're gonna come in at the end with the Kraken. And we're gonna see if this machine can push a 90 millimeter drill right in that radius of that part. Thanks for stopping by, we'll see you next time.